New car announcements have come fast and furious these days. With all that excitement, there are some super fast super cars that you don't want to miss. With 300 mile an hour hypercars made in single digit runs grabbing all the headlines, it might be easy to forget that there are some spectacular full production supercars in showrooms and on the way that are more than fast enough to whet our appetites. Let's look at some supercars that you don't want to miss. When Ian Fleming's James Bond might have a preference for supercharged pre-war Bentley, the James Bond of the silver screen will forever be associated with Aston Martin. By 2024, Bond might be able to have a new favorite in the Aston Martin Vanquish. Revealed as a concept at last year's Geneva Auto Show, the Vanquish takes the old Aston badge and puts it on new ground for Aston, a mid-engine production car. The Vanquish will be one of three mid-engine offerings from Aston Martin, sitting below the Valkyrie and Valhalla designed with Aston Martin's F1 racing partner, Red Bull Racing. Details are still sparse on the ground, but Aston has shared that it will sit on a bonded aluminum chassis and motivation will come from their turbocharged V6 out of the Valhalla. In the Valhalla, the engine is married to an F1-style kinetic energy recovery system, or KERS, that can boost output to 1,000 horsepower. We'll have to wait on what the output will be for the Vanquish, but for those wanting a seat in one, it will set them back $450,000. No one said being a super spy was cheap. Movie fans might recognize the name Bruce McLaren as the one who was awarded the win for the dramatic 1966 24 Hours of Le Mans in the movie Ford vs. Ferrari. Like Carroll Shelby, Bruce was a racer turned car builder whose orange cherry powered Can Am cars dominated the series. These days, however, McLaren is known as a top tier Formula One team and is a maker of top tier sports cars. Sitting at the top of their sports car line, but below limited run cars like their Barchetta Elva and tribute to legendary McLaren driver Ariton Senna is the 720S. The 720S is powered by a mid-mounted twin-turbo V8 that puts 710 horsepower through a 7-speed dual-clutch transmission that makes the 720S do the 0-60 shuffle in a staggering 2.7 seconds. New for 2020 is a motorized top that adds rushing air to the sports car experience. The topless version cashes in at $317,500 or $329,630 for the Performance Spider version. Exotic car ownership can get expensive, but McLaren actually offers a no-limit warranty that covers the car for 12 years for a supercar. Ferrari, of course, needs no introduction. For most, they are the gold standard of aspirational sports cars. Like McLaren and Aston Martin, they've released their share of single-digit runs of specialty cars and hybrid hypercars to make the mouth water, but the supercar offerings are no slouch. Ferrari has been working the mid-engine layout since the 246 Dino, and the F8 Tributo is the modern result of all that work. Holding over the 710 horsepower twin turbo from the 488 Pista combined with a dual clutch 7 speed transmission, the F8 Tributo hits the 60 mark from a standstill in 2.8 seconds. Reaching highway speeds faster than it takes to count to three isn't the whole story for the F8 as it makes use of years of Ferrari racing know-how to create a car that craves corners. For those keeping score, that puts power and acceleration pretty much on par with its British competition from McLaren. Unlike the McLaren, the F8 Tributo comes in a characteristically Ferrari single trim that costs $279,450. While that's a steep discount from the McLaren, the service warranty on the Ferrari runs out after seven years. Then those expensive Ferrari garage visits are on you. For purists, a performance car doesn't need more than two doors and certainly doesn't need a back seat. But that doesn't mean four doors automatically equals boring. Lamborghini hopes to convince people of that with their rumored Estoque. At the moment, the Estoque is more of a persistent rumor than it is a real car. Presented as a concept dating all the way back to 2008, but Lamborghini's R&D head Maurizio Reggiani has hinted that in the middle of the decade we might finally see a 2 plus 2 bearing the full badge. That just so happens to be about the time the Lamborghini plans to add battery electrics to the mix, fueling rumors that it could share a platform with its corporate cousin Porsche Taycan. Electrification means goals like a sub 3 second run to 60 should be easy to achieve. Less easy is the slated goal for a 350 mile range. Since the car only exists in our dreams, things like price haven't even been sorted out yet. But expect it to be in the $230,000 range. Unlike the entries from England and Ferrari though, you'll be able to take more than one friend with you on the go.
In the 90s, Honda dipped its toe in the supercar market by making the Honda of supercars. Sure, it was fast and it was nimble. Honda has been a figure in racing for decades, including Formula One and Indy cars. But it was also reliable and drivable on a daily basis, unlike the fragile and finicky cars out of Italy. The NSX, released under the Acura badge in the United States, was an instant hit. The 21st century NSX has garnered fans like Jerry Seinfeld, Jay Leno, and science bros Tony Stark and Bruce Banner in the Avengers. High-profile love has not turned into high sales numbers for the NSX, however, with the car struggling to stand out since its 2017 reintroduction. When Honda wants you to know they're serious about performance, they put the Type R badge on their cars, and a Type R badge might be coming to the NSX. Though Honda has stated there won't be, recent rumors of a hopped-up NSX have hopped up hopes of an NSX with a Type R badge. Borrowing from the race-prepared NSX GT3, the more powerful NSX will send 650 horsepower power through the 9-speed transmission. While we're not sure in the end what that will do for the car in terms of speed, in terms of cost, it's likely to send the price north of $200,000. But then you're maintaining a Honda, not a British or Italian exotic. Corvette has always been America's sports car, but with the eighth evolution of the beast from Bowling Green, the Corvette has moved into supercar territory partially by moving its powerful V8 to the middle. The combination has been pretty successful so far. The Corvette C8R Racing in the IMSA Racing Series scoring three victories in a row. Since the C8 is new, everyone has expected bigger and badder engine numbers to come forth, including a Z06. But a report from Muscle Car and Trucks suggests that a twin-turbo V8 producing 800 horsepower is in Corvette's future and will wear the ZR1 badge. Last seen on the most powerful Corvette in 2017, pumping out 755 horsepower. The engine would also get the flat plane crank of the race car engine that allows for high revs and develops a distinct race for car engine sound. This will certainly push the price past the current top range, $120,500, but still a bargain compared to the cars that Corvette just beat three times in a row on tracks across North America. Maserati at one time was the name to beat in Italian race cars, competing alongside Alfa Romeos in Formula One in the pre-war era. After World War II, an imposing man named Ferrari would upend that. Since then, Maserati has had some unfortunate bouts of stewardship before landing under the Fiat umbrella with rivals Ferrari and Alfa Romeo. Being grouped with Alfa Romeo has meant that Maseratis were being treated like a mass-market brand, an ill fit for the storied Italian badge. Those days are over, as an MC20-based mid-engine supercar is set to put the brand back on track. Like most of the cars on this list, the twin-turbo V6 sits in the middle, pumping out 631 horsepower and runs to 62 miles per hour, or 100 kilometers an hour, in 2.9 seconds. While it's producing Ferrari numbers with two less cylinders, it still comes with a Ferrari price of around $195,000 to $215,000. Lotus is a different kind of sports car maker. While other manufacturers build their cars out with gadgets and doodads and try to offset the weight of all that with carbon fiber and other weight loss tricks, Lotus has always been guided by founder Colin Chapman's principle of adding lightness. Lotus cars don't go through a lightning process. They start off with the idea of making a lightweight car. That principle has made their Toyota-powered Elise a world-class sports car despite putting out 187 to 210 horsepower, what you'd see in a mid-range hot hatch. Lotus is taking that philosophy back to the supercar with their new Type 131. At this point, little is known about the mid-engine car from Norfolk, England, including who will make the engine, though it's assumed to produce around 400 horsepower. That doesn't sound like much compared to other cars on the list, but Lotus is known for making a lot out of a little. We don't even know the name, as Type 131 is an internal designation. We do know that whatever the name is, it will start with E, maybe even getting the Elon badge. Price should fall in the $120,000 range. Porsche has paraded some admirable hypercars in the last few years with the Carrera GT and 918, but when people think of the name Porsche, they are really thinking of the long-running 911. The 911 comes in a lot of flavors, including models that are basically race cars with license plates. The GT3 has become a favorite for privateers, cup racers, and well-heeled fans that want race car pedigree in their drivers. The GT3 is naturally aspirated to comply with FIA GT3 specs as well as other series across the globe. The GT2 adds turbo charging to the mix, and the Rensport, or RS, adds more racing heat to the performance. That means 700 horsepower out of the 3.8 liter flat 6 that will see you doing 62 miles per hour from a standing start in 2.6 seconds, while the race-tested chassis holds it all together when the road gets twisty. Porsche's bread and butter is endurance racing, meaning that the Porsche comes with a characteristic reliability as well, all that comes at a cost hovering around $300,000. 
Most of these brands have been around for decades, building on storied traditions and past successes, all building on years of engine tuning expertise. Meanwhile, out of Silicon Valley, one plucky little startup has changed the automobile landscape and the future, leaving all these storied companies playing catch up. Tesla introduced the world to the long range battery electric vehicle with a Lotus Elise based Roadster. Now that they amount for 80% of EV sales in the United States with a pair of sedans and SUVs, Tesla is returning to the car that started it all with a supercar worthy road. Roadster, this time built from the ground up. No details have been released on the car, and Tesla has a decidedly Silicon Valley track record when it comes to launching on time. The numbers he's aiming for, however, are impressive. Not just the 620 mile range or the 250 mile per hour top speed, but the sub 2 second run to 60 and 8.8 .8 second quarter mile. Price is pegged at $200,000 with a $50,000 premium for the founder's edition, though we don't know what that will entail. Those are some of the most exciting supercars and showrooms now or coming soon. What high-performance production car are you most looking forward to? Let us know in the comments, and while you're there, make sure to subscribe to The Richest for the latest in your inbox.